Hi, I'm Paul Perdue, and I am the infrastructure nerd. And I'm Mary Jo Boyd, a legal technologist. You know, a lot of um, the version 19 features that have come out have been really spectacular. And one area, though, that often gets overlooked uh, or doesn't always have um, updates is accounts payable. Well, do they have new things this time? They do. Well, maybe you can show us those. <laughs> I would be happy to. <laughs> so today we're going to talk about all of the new features that are in version 19 for accounts payable. So over the last few releases, occasionally we'll have a few things that have changed in accounts payable. But um, I think there's in version 19, we probably have more than we've had before. So I want to go over these uh, new features in depth so that you can kind of see everything that's happening and, and where to go and what to do. Now, some of these things might seem kind of minor, some might be a little bit more, but I think they're all relevant. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is bank accounts and how now in version 19, we can inactivate bank accounts. Now, what does that mean? So if before you had a list of bank accounts and possibly you switched banks one, two, three, four times, depending how long you've had the program, all of those bank accounts were still out there. And so when you would go to enter an invoice or manual check, you would have to go scroll through those bank accounts and make sure you pick the right one. Well, that could be kind of cumbersome. And inevitably, people would pick the wrong bank account, which we definitely don't want that. So what they've done now is offered this little inactive button. So if bank account one, for instance, is inactive now, and I check the box, now that bank account will not show up on my invoice manual check screen. It's not even available to select. So that is huge for users. And you know, we've tried to do the old bank account, don't use and renaming thing. And sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. But this is a surefire way. Inactivate the bank account. No new invoices can be added for that bank account and no reoccurring entries as well. So this is a little thing, but a big thing when you really think about it. We also now with vendors can inactivate a vendor. Now, why would we wanna do that? Well, again, if you've had AP for a long time, you can probably attest to the fact that you have more than one vendor for the same vendor out there. You've got multiple versions of it or duplicate vendors out there. And so what we wanna do is now you know, if you, you can't just go in and delete a vendor. And sometimes we can't even transfer all of the old stuff to the new vendor and, and then delete it um, because there's activity there. But now what we can do is we can go in and we can inactivate a vendor. So again, I'm just gonna pick a vendor here and there's an inactivate box right here. So you just check that and mark it inactive. And now you will no longer be able to create invoices for that vendor and you won't be able to set up reoccurring entries as well. So again, similar, similar to the bank account to inactivate it, um, but now we can do that on a vendor level as well. The next thing that we can do um, that has changed is in our invoice manual check window. So when we go in to enter an invoice, we now have a third option to put an invoice in as an EFT. So in the past, you may have created a separate bank account, which is actually pointing to the same operating account that you use for your regular checks, but you might have named it something for electronic fund transfers or something like that. And it would put in a bogus check number down here and you would then just go ahead and let those accumulate up to whatever they were. Now in accounts payable, we still have our option for an unpaid invoice. This is the ones that you will print a check out for. We've got our manual check option, which then we can go ahead and enter a check after the fact. It's already been printed and we do not want to print one in the, in the system. But now we've got the third option of an EFT. And when we select EFT, it puts into the check number automatically EFT. So electronic fund transfer. These are those automatic withdrawals that you are having come out of the bank account. It will still put it in as the date paid and everything else is the same, but now we have that EFT option. So that is huge as well. I think that's a very big benefit there for us. Another new feature that we have is in our print checks. So let me get out of this and go to print checks. 
So a couple of new things here in print checks. The first thing is that when we select invoices to print and we say OK, we have a new feature in the version 19 to keep track of the client cost advanced. Um, whether or not they've been paid in tabs, whether or not we have issued the check here in AP, and if you've set up your account in General Ledger as a client cost advance account, which I believe we've talked about in another video, um, you can then track this even when we're going to print our invoices. So now on our select invoices to print screen, we have an additional tabs three column where we can see whether or not the client has actually paid for this particular invoice that we've done. And a lot of times what I see in firms um, is that they uh, do not pay their vendors until the client has paid them in tabs three. So when they receive the payment from the client for this court cost or this medical record request or whatever, then they go ahead and cut the check and pay the court or the medical provider or whoever that would be. So now there's a way to track that. Before I print the check, I can see immediately that this, this invoice right here, the first line, has been paid. But if I scroll down, this one has not been paid. These are all unpaid invoices that have not been paid by the client um, in tabs yet. So this gives me that tool to say which checks I want to print and which ones I don't. Now, tabs three is one even further to also give you a box here that says to exclude any invoices with unpaid tabs three cost transactions. So if that, if I check that box and I say okay and preview this box, I have no checks out here that are unpaid because I've eliminated them off my list entirely. So then I could just check all and print all the others. Then if I wanted to see the remaining checks that have not been paid, I could uncheck that box and preview it again. So that gives you another way to track whether or not the client has paid those particular invoices or not. Something else that is new in terminology, since they did add um, the EFT option, is it has renamed the post checks and now it's post checks and EFTs, or it would be void posted checks or EFTs. So those are just terminology things that have changed, nothing big, just so that you know it's the same concept, but now it will include those EFTs. Something else that's new and different is in our check register. We now have that ability to see those EFTs on the list. So I'm just going to do a check register. And so you'll see all of the regular check numbers. But if I scroll down, I have an EFT down here. And it will show on the check register as an EFT. Something else that is different um, with those tabs three costs is if I go to a cash requirements report, for example, there are several places this will show, but the pre-check register, the cash requirements report, uh, the invoice by vendor list, the invoice by voucher list, any of those lists can show this tab three information now. So what I'm going to show you here is if I look at the cash requirements report, it will tell me whether or not an invoice has been paid in tabs yet. So there will be um, a underneath the invoice. Let me see if I can find one here. So cash requirements, do I have any? Let me get down to another bank account here. Got a couple of them here. Let's see if I can find one that's not been paid yet. Maybe not. How about we look at the pre-check register? So let's try that one and see if we have anything there the tabs three information and the GLS, why not? Let's go in here. So here's the little uh, section here that you can see. So here's the T code and it has been paid. So this particular invoice on my pre-check register, I know has actually been paid. Um, same here, if there's not one that's been paid here, that is right on that list there. So it's kind of that same information that we saw on the print checks option, but that is available here on this report as well. So this is the pre-check register. You can see that on there, and there's several other reports that you also can see there too. 
The other option that we have um, that has been added is spell check. So now in our cost entry window, when we are entering an invoice and then we are going out um, and saving that, um, I'm just gonna throw one in here um, and we will go in and just do that and just make sure this is to 100. So now when this cost window pops up, there is now spell check available in here. So we do have spell check. Uh, and then you can go ahead and maintain that just like in any of the other programs that we have. Now, lastly, I'm gonna show you, is in our, get out of all that, in our customization, we also have a new box out here that we can only display tab three cost uh, entry window for advanced client costs. So what does that mean? Well, this is huge because you know every time we put an invoice in AP, uh, whenever we're entering that, before version 19, no matter who you entered it for or what account you chose on the general ledger tab, that tab three cost entry window would pop up. And if it was for a firm expense or something that was not client related, you would always have to just close that box. Well, now if you've specified what your advanced client cost account is uh, in General Ledger, you can check this box in customization. And the only time that that tab three cost entry uh, window will open is if you've chosen on the General Ledger screen the client cost advance account. So this stops that automatic pop with every single invoice that you write it's going to just pop for if it's a client cost advance. And it knows that by the account that you pick. And you have to have specified that that is the client cost advance account in General Ledger. That will then pull over to eight accounts payable. And then that window will only pop when that account is chosen. So that's a big deal too, because you don't have so many clicks to close the window. So that's what I'm gonna to cover today. Uh, I hope that's been helpful and you can explore accounts payable a little bit more and enjoy the new features. So there you have it, all the new features that are now available in version 19 for Accounts Payable. And it's just one more way we can help you to worry less. And practice more.